Welcome back. And we're ready to start putting some color into this painting. Um, just, a, just a note before I go forward, uh, that snoring that you hear in the background is my dog Lola. And uh, some artists like to hear um, classical music, maybe a little Beethoven or Chopin. But um, well, I like the sound of that snoring dog. She makes me happy. <coughs> so I hope that's not too much of a distraction. And we'll get going here. Got a big brush. Uh, it's about a number 10. Um, I used a couple of different brands. I like um, Simmons. Simmons makes a, a classic brush called Signet. Um, this one is one of their uh, economy brushes called Simply Simmons. And it's only a few dollars. And you wear it out. But you certainly get your money's worth. Another brush I like to use that you'll see here this is a brush called Silver. Silver is the brand name, or Silver Brush, I think. They have a couple of different series, but um, I like them too. They, they, they hold up together nicely. All right, let's start painting. I think we're gonna take a little bit of white to start with. I'm gonna get a little bit of that Thalo Turquoise. I love this color. Um, it's a transparent phthalo um, color, and it's sort of my replacement for manganese, which uh, has become very difficult to find. I don't even think there's a manufacturer that makes it anymore. So I just want to thin this out. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me take some color. Okay. <coughs> important thing that I do um, when I start my picture is I put a very thin coat on, really kind of scrub it in, and for the reason that I know I'm going to be layering other colors on top of it, so I don't want so much paint that it gets muddy and um, difficult to paint into. I will blend that down a little bit later. And I think, uh, I'm starting to think through that in this particular picture, we might have a nice little moonlight. I kind of figure out if it's going to be the moon or the sun. I think the moon. So this is going to be um, what they call a nocturnal painting, sort of. Not, not exactly. But I do want to, if that's the case, I do want to knock down the intensity or the chroma the color that I'm using. So instead of using pure white in, in this instance, I am going to start to get a little bit more white in that sky. And since my light source is over here, I might even push a little, little ultramarine blue, darken that corner down. I could probably use ultramarine and a little dark gray. source is going to be here. I think we want to be a little bit darker on that side. So, and I might add just a touch of yellow. I don't want to use a bright yellow because that's going to go way too green. I'm just getting a little bit of that um, ochre into that sky. Uh, 
Now, we're still, we always have to keep in mind when we're painting a, um, a seascape or anything over water, but there's always this sense of moisture, right? In that sky. So we gray it down a lot, that will create the feeling that we're seeing uh, that mist or that mist. Moisture is really the word that comes to mind that sits in between us and our subject matter. So that's why putting that grayscale out helps because I don't have to sit down and try to mix out every gray as I go along. Um, I just kind of pull it right from there whenever I think this happens in my picture. And once again, I'm just kind of scrubbing right now. I'm not worried about a big, too, 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 uh, too many brush strokes in there. I can soften that up. I'm gonna now take a little bit of white, just so it's ochre. And I got a touch of orange. Well, maybe even some red. Just the dot of it in, in that sky, which is going to be kind of right. In most situations, you want to try to get the color exactly the way you see it in your mind. Um, or if you're painting the outdoors, as you see it out in nature. I shouldn't guess too much, but a lot of times you need to get it on the canvas to see if it's going to work. Um, so especially with something like this, I'm painting. Oh, I'm a little sloppy here. I'm, you know what? I'm not going to get sloppy. I'm going to switch to another brush because using that brush, I still have the blue on it, right? So I'll just take a, a, another brush to lay this color in so that no you showing me the wrong thing. <laughs>
brush and just smush that color in there a little bit more. That's how we create atmosphere. Sometimes you can do it right on your palette and, and, and get that color right where you want it. But sometimes we can do it by experimenting a little bit, being a little bit spontaneous and just make it happen on our canvas. Now, I don't want to create any kind of a rim or halo around this. That happens sometimes when we, we, we paint something in and we'll just try to keep it perfect. I don't really care. Like I said, this is really thin paint um, at this point. So I can push this color in right into that lighthouse. And we'll get it back later. All right. That's the little house brush out. This is a simple, I think it's uh, five brushes for $7.99 at uh, Home Depot and gets the job done. This is great for when I'm working on bigger canvases, but also on a small canvas like this. Oh, this is 16 by 20. Um, and I can refine those colors a little bit more now. And also, that saves me a lot of time, because I don't want to spend too much time on the sky. but it gives me a chance to soften things. All right, when I come back, we'll start laying in our clouds.